Let's bring in Republican Congressman Michael Waltz from Florida. He's a member of the House Armed Services Committee and a former Green Beret. Sir, thank you and, and great to have you here. You're calling this a pivotal moment for U.S.-Israeli relations. So what are you seeing and what does the White House need to do considering this phone call with Biden and Netanyahu is taking place this hour? Well, first, let me just say, you know, shame on the progressives, shame on Representative Ocasio-Cortez for comparing Israel, uh, our greatest ally in a democracy in the Middle East, to an apartheid-led government. By the way, Israel has Arabs in its Knesset, in its parliament, as, uh, as Israeli citizens, uh, and was formed in the wake of the world's greatest genocide, the Holocaust, and has every right to defend themselves. It is easy. Israel is our ally, Israel is a democracy, Hamas is a terrorist organization, uh, call, you know, acknowledged as a terrorist organization around the world that represses its people and is deliberately attacking civilians while deliberately hiding behind their own civilians, including hospitals, schools, playgrounds, and apparently buildings with the press inside. Uh, we need to be clear uh, in the value and the criticality of the U.S.-Israeli relationship. I can tell you as a member of the Armed Services Committee, I will absolutely be authorizing that military aid, that $3.8 billion, uh, because it's needed by our ally uh, who has been critical in helping us fight terrorism around the world. But as you mentioned, Biden's getting heat from his own party for that, uh, Congressman. Jen Psaki yeah. just held a briefing at the White House. She was asked about the White House response, and she said this. Our calculation at this point is that having those conversations behind the scenes, uh, weighing in with our important strategic partnership we have with Israel, also with other countries in the region, is the most constructive approach we can take. So our approach is through quiet, intensive diplomacy, uh, and that's uh, where we feel we can be most effective. Rick Grinnell was here last hour, responded to that. I know you're jumping in, but listen what he said, and I'll get your reaction. Sure. The crisis that's going on, we don't need quiet diplomacy. We need loud diplomacy. We don't have a U.S. ambassador uh, to Israel right now. We have a charge, and that person doesn't know Joe Biden. Uh, there is no credibility in the region when it comes to trying to have what they're calling quiet diplomacy. Pretty strong reaction there. Go ahead, Congressman. Well, I think Rick is right, and I would like to see stronger and more vocal support for the, from the administration for Israel. But I am grateful in fairness that they're not calling on Israel to stop. Uh, they are affirming Israel's right to defend itself. They've been good on the issue in the U.N. so far. But really, Sandra, what this is about, this is about Iran. Uh, and the administration is uh, about to throw cash at the Palestinians. They are about to unlock sanctions in Iran. And when they do, billions will flow into Tehran and then right over to Hezbollah in Lebanon, Hamas in the, in the West Bank, the, the militias in Iraq, uh, down to Yemen, and to destabilize the entire region once again. So really what we need to be focused on is Iran and keeping that maximum pressure campaign in place. You've been very clear that we cannot waver in the face of this conflict. Going back to your original criticism of those on the far left that are criticizing uh, President Biden yeah. for his actions, Do, does there need to be some accountability for their words? Well, on the face of them, they're anti-Semitic. I mean, especially that comparison uh, to apartheid, that's just disgusting. Uh, and I would like to see some accountability, but frankly, I don't expect it in a Congress run by uh, Schumer and Pelosi. So what, what needs to happen on that phone call? We know that this is happening any moment now. Within this hour, President Biden said he will be speaking with Benjamin Netanyahu. What can the White House say in this moment to calm tensions? Well, you know, I think both sides right now, Hamas uh, has about 30,000 estimated rockets. We think they've fire, fired only 3,000, but the Israelis are seriously uh, militarily degrading uh, Hamas, their ability to fire these rockets, their commanders. They had an amazing kind of PSYOP uh, operation where uh, they basically tricked Hamas to separate themselves from their own people and go into tunnels by by a ruse, frankly, with the mainstream media who bought it uh, hook, line, and sinker. So the, the, the Israelis right now are winning militarily. They've turned this tactically on the ground, uh, but they need our support internationally and with the messaging campaign. Uh, and, and I expect when Hamas sees that 
and sees that we're not going to, uh, that, we're, that we have our Israel's back, uh, that's the signal that we need to send uh, to calm this down. Because as long as Hamas is launching those rockets, yeah. Israel rightly is going to defend itself. Congressman, I want to finish up by asking you about that attack on the pipeline. And therefore, the result has been a spike in gas prices. Some are talking Jimmy Carter 2.0. We're seeing the price of so many things going up, including gas prices. As many outages continue at stations uh, all along the East Coast. So what happens next with all this and how the heck do we prevent something like this from happening again? Yeah, so so at the end of the day, the world right now smells weakness in the White House. What's the what's the downside for the Russians or through their proxies, these criminal groups to continue to do this? I mean, whether you launch a cyber attack or a bombing attack on our critical infrastructure, we need to view it as an attack. The Russians we know could stop these groups if they chose. We need to establish deterrence. Flick the lights in the Kremlin, make them understand that we can do the same and we have the will and the capability to do so. Otherwise, they're just going to keep doing it and doing it and doing it, causing this type of disruption to American society. Enough is enough and we need to send that strong signal. Congressman, always appreciate your input and perspective. Thanks for joining us. Thank okay, you. Okay, thanks so much. Okay.